Welcome out to Third World Linux. Jao here, and we really, 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 really tried to record a proper Third World Linux episode for this week. But when we sat down to record, the internet connections were terrible. AG was really tired because of stuff that was going on in his neighborhood. I was really tired because of labor law. Like, uh, so, so listening back to the episode, it was really bad. Um, we did get into a little bit of Linux. We talked a bit about Linux 4.0, but didn't get into any depth. Like, sure, you can update without restarting, but that was about it. Um, we totally forgot that Elementary OS had released a new version. So, you know, it, it really wasn't good, right? So this week, instead of not having an episode, we will be giving you guys, or we're going to be releasing an episode that was supposed to be for Bodega Nights, right? Uh, think of it as like an extended off-tangent section. So if you're thinking about listening to something... Linux related, uh, come back in two weeks. And, uh, and another disclaimer, um, it, it wasn't edited very well. So the volume might be off. Uh, there's going to be background noise. We, we did record it on a balcony. Uh, you might hear some cars in the background. And I'm not sure if I edited for content. Uh, probably didn't. So, um, I think there's like a point in there where AG cusses and I say like, dude, we can't cuss. It's Bodega Nights and fully intended to cut it out, but eh, got kind of bogged down and um we're sorry for the late episode as well so uh if you're cool with an off tangent section that lasts for like 45 minutes uh listen on um otherwise uh really sorry and see you in a couple of weeks dig that channel it's british humor and gaming okay and the thing is about outside xbox is they made a video of like five things COD players, co professional COD players do really well, like amazing things, like pro moves. I was expecting, oh, we probably did that stuff. All of it was advanced warfare. <laughs> and, and I saw how they move. That's how pretty much Norm and I move in normal, th in, in COD 4. But they do it with like the jumper things, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. How, how they dodge bullets. Amazing. Welcome out to Bodega Nights. <laughs> Welcome to channel14.com's Bodega Nights. I'm Jao. My name is AJ and we're gonna talk about things. <laughs> Cause Bodega Nights is all about, you know, things. Things and a bunch of friends hanging out. So we started with outside Xbox. Because, uh, when I saw, like, one of the stunts that uh, someone did, imagine, imagine, say, you know, um, in Backlot, the machine gun house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine there's someone in the machine gun house. Ah, uh, you are in the machine gun house. You just killed the person that was previously there. They're chasing you to go there. Okay. What you do is you jump out the window. Yeah. But you don't climb the stairs. Okay. To go back up, you jump on the next window to flank that same person who just tried to flank you. So like you jump out of the window to jump into the next window. Yeah. That's what that person did in like in the COD finals. Like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm like Wow, and then how we, I'm um because they were using PCs, which is great for them. Yeah, the screen twitch, man. It's like watching boxer play. Like, like, like they keep their uh, they, they keep their sensitivity maxed and stuff. I'm not sure if it's max, but it's like I saw, and then the guy's dead. Oh, jeez, nice. and and since because of the machines in advanced warfare, like uh, the exosuits, right? Mm -hmm. It also grants ability to jump forward or uh, dash forward and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He dashed, he anticipated, well, one of the stunts, that uh, not stunts, but like pro moves did was a guy strafed inside a room. Okay. So what he did was not jump forward, jump laterally, but oh, pointing yeah, yeah, the yeah. gun like, oh my god. <laughs> like, like, Sorry, watching, radio like, listeners. Matrix. Yeah. But like, like Matrix moves. Yeah. It's like, oh crap, those are really good moves. Like, I understand that we are so lucky we played COD on our time, COD 4 on our time. Because we won't be able to play that level now. Because of our age. Had we been 16 this time, that's what we've been, been playing. No, we wouldn't because like they yeah. don't have land. Do they, do they have land? They don't no, have they land. don't have land, right? So <laughs> <laughs> Probably the, the, the pro scene probably has land. Really? We probably made special COD. I, w I wouldn't know. Yeah. Like, Kespa, sure. Kespa modifies Brood War. Yeah, but then that's Brood War. Yeah. Uh, I think StarCraft 2 might have to go through Battle.net, I'm not sure. Um, there you go. 
um, I think God. I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with God for Pro Scene. Just watch that out, outside Xbox video. Okay. And, Wait, God for it. Does God for have a Pro Scene or or is it like Advanced it Warfare? Used to. Like, yeah, but like now. It's Advanced Warfare. Ah, okay. And I, I, the point I uh, the, I like the point that outside Xbox made because everyone's saying that COD Four is like a uh, COD at least or Advanced Warfare and all that it is an easy game, blah blah blah, and everybody can play it. And they just showed high level of skill, just like what we were discussing before. There's StarCraft, like way, 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 way back before podcasting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But what's um, the it's pros? The meta game, though. Yeah, it's pros the just game. tend to elevate a freaking game. Yeah. So, and and I see the same thing with like StarCraft Two now, even though uh, StarCraft Two was quote unquote an easier game than Brood War. Mm. Like some of the pro moves are insane. Yeah, uh, you have you have these things called spore or spine crawlers. Uh, spine crawlers. Then you have marines in a bunker. So spine crawlers are sort of like your um, sunken colonies. Mm-hmm. Right. So the way the range works is spore crawlers outrange marines in a bunker. But, but there was this. I forgot who it was, but like. He, he took advantage of the cooldown time of a spore crawler. So the spore crawler strikes then pulls the, back. the bunker, then pulls back. And um, after the spore crawler hit the bunker and was pulling back, the guy out. popped out the marines, took a Take few shots, shots at the spore crawler, bring it back, back to the in. bunker. Oh my god. <laughs> Whoa. Boxer level play. Yeah, exactly. Boxer level play. So, like, that's the, the sort of thing that you see in the pro scene. Yeah. And I'm sure the same thing, like, happens with. League of Legends and Dota. and Dota. Yeah, I've seen a lot of um, how Queen of Pain is. He ha- uh, she has an ability of blinking ability, so it can teleport okay. or whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Like how people use that blink is just insane. Or oh, with yeah, blink yeah. daggers, because uh, everyone a, you can buy a blink dagger it can give you ability to blink anywhere, not mm. anywhere in the map, but like in a certain area. Yeah, yeah like yeah. how they utilize that and whatnot. It's just, but yeah, uh, you could see a lot of. Lots of pro moves with with Dota I can go on and on and on because weird. I stopped playing Dota because hey, I don't have a Steam box, a Steam box, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Steam machine. I just I still watch though. Okay, yeah. I still watch from time to time. Like if it, I think it's entertaining or I, I want, I need passive noise. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm editing and whatnot, I just need some noise there because that's, that's, I mean, Rooster Teeth videos can only get you so far <laughs> in a day. That's what I do with like when when I uh, like before I go to sleep. I find it difficult to sleep in silence because I've been conditioned by living in Manila for so long and living like in the heart of uh, well, living in Ortigas for so yeah, long. There's like, so much ambient noise. Yeah. So like when I moved back to Cebu and there was like dead silence in the evening, like <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> so I need passive noise. Yeah. So what I did was I started watching uh Starcraft 2 <laughs> like passively like have it mm. running in the background because the way the ESL channel works so whatever that uh-huh. is it's the E Star League whatever it is um, like they have they have like the entire best of 5 or the entire best of 7 in as one. one video so it's like oh, an nice. hour long oh, that's the nice thing about Starcraft for me because mm-hmm. um, Starcraft games can range up to 10 minutes or 45 minutes yeah Dota 2 games 45 minutes or 1 hour and 30 <laughs> <laughs> like there, you could rarely there, there's so uh, it's such a rare event that a game is done in 30 minutes or 25 minutes mm. when a game is done in 25 minutes think 4 pool whoa yeah like 4 pool is done like 5 minutes yeah that's already 4 pool in, in, in Dota 2 terms when a game is done in 25 or 30 minutes huh. and then and those rarely happen and when you see it happen masterful like that's an entire team just clobbering the other team oh okay like yeah. in, in 25 minute mark they already destroyed certain towers or the gold advantage yeah is just like how the, the other team was able to farm so much that like they're three levels up oh, okay like stuff like that it's like uh, I, I, I'll never forget that when um, when Zhe Dong was four pooled, yeah, and Zhe Dong 
did a 12 hatch. 12 hatch. And he was able to defeat 12 hatch. Uh, he was able, able to, to defeat, defeat the four, four pool. pool. Does, does anything like that ever happen in Dota? Yeah. So, like, you have some, you have a team that's impossibly ahead, and, yes, like, they're pushed that back. that still happens. That happens. And, um, there go, therein lies the masterful teamwork. That's, mm. that's what's nice for me about Dota. Is, because, the, the, it, it always starts with the draft. Yeah, of heroes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what happens is, okay, the heroes of the other, the, the four pool type usually happens when the other team's heroes are entirely countered. Because oh, of the draft. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's where the skill comes in. If the other team still manages to win, even if their heroes are like hard countered, hard, hard countered, it's amazing because um, on the fly they will really change up their strategy. You could see it like sometimes. Oh, we know this hero is not good facing three people in the lane. Ah, uh, okay. So it's it's, it's a meta game. Yeah. Thing. So what's gonna happen is you could see like at the couple of minutes mark that. You'll see some rotations in the lanes and what. Okay, like meta game. Yeah, exactly. that's amazing. Or, or, or you can see they're gonna be clobbered. In say, say, okay, all the the heroes they pick, they really, yeah, they hard counter us, but they don't realize that their heroes are weak at the mid game. Mm. So we have to defend early. So you can see them just hugging towers and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not even farming the off lanes, but and you have your I, I explained to you the role of the what do you call that? The support. Yeah. The support is freaking all over the place because he has to, you know, double check everything and whatnot. Mm. But come the mid game, boom. <laughs> like that's where they Yeah, that's where they get their advantage. And then that and and those for me are the most entertaining games when somebody is ruling uh, the other team, like team A is ruling early game, then team B Makes something uh, makes a charge for in, in the mid game, mm. and then the end game is gonna be amazing. It's like a, that's when everybody's all at level twenty five and all with high power equipment, and then they're just gonna get at it like skill. It's all that falls down to skill. That's how uh, there was this thing when Blizzard was balancing StarCraft two mm-hmm. that was sort of an issue in in the community, but like. The, the, the guys at Blizzard made the statement that when it comes to balancing the races, they have no problem with one race being more powerful than another race at a certain point in the game. Yeah. Like, I think that's part of the meta game. Yeah. So, I don't know. It was, it, was, it was interesting. I mean, I will always... I mean, hardcore Protoss, but I will post it that Protoss, crap. Utter crap, early game. <laughs> yeah. Then, like once you hit the late game, once you hit the late game, like I mean, mid game, and it, Protoss gains momentum, you're screwed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like um, or an attrition game. Mm. I mean, Terran Rin always will win attrition. Right. But Protoss could be there. Yeah. Which, thank thank God for stasis. Yeah. What was it like? Like Zerg is very 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 strong in the mid game. Yeah. Like with with uh with the Muta harass. Um, in in StarCraft two terms, when you have uh, when you have your Roach Baneling uh-huh. sort of combination Baneling. coming in, like um, or or like your Roach Hydra, uh, the the break, yeah, um, when they go for a break, it's 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 so cool, like and and a lot of the uh, a lot of the, the 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 dynamics really haven't changed in the sense that say like in the Zerg late game. With Brood War, you had uh, you had your Ultraling rush, mm-hmm. where the Ultralisks would tank damage and the Zerglings would do damage. Like that's sort of how it is with your mid-game uh, Roach Hydra in mm-hmm. StarCraft Two, where your Roaches are tanking the damage and your Hydralisks are the ones that are clobbering like, everything. Yeah, yeah. I, I really don't have a point there. <laughs> No, it's just uh, that um, other than I, other than I've been watching too much StarCraft yeah. for my own good. No, I mean, Zerg really has a strong early to mid game, but they kind of struggle at late game. And then at the very late game, Zerg is like unstoppable. Exactly, that's what I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna say. Like there comes a point at the late game where it suddenly tips the scale, and it was so drastic. Yeah, I've seen J Dong win many victories because of that against Terrans. You know, like once, um, like once you like like with Rude War, once you have the Defiler out, yeah, like once the Defiler is out and you have uh, 
and and, and or, you have those those uh, the, yeah, the long range ZVT uh, uh, queens and when the queen and defiler is out, yeah, like, like ZVT is pro- like and and that takes absolute late game, yeah, to have the defiler and the queen out. There the, was that one. Um, this is that one game where the where, where where the queen casted the slow them down spell? Yeah. Was it? Uh, I forgot. Yeah, uh, I forgot the name of that spell. Not not radiate, not plague. Yeah, because it was yeah. that, and then the plague came in. Yeah. Like wow. Yeah. Beautiful. Right. But to pull that off, high level of skill. High level of skill. Very like ultra late game. Yeah. <laughs> Which rarely happens, but when you see it, beautiful. <laughs> yeah. And it's a motorcycle. But you've been harping good things about Starcraft 2 is it going to the level now of how good Brood War was uh no how Brood War is <laughs> I, I don't think so <laughs> not yet like, well the thing that I liked about but it's it's tipping the scales now it's becoming really really interesting yeah like it's it's uh because because Blizzard stopped doing like patches every other week <laughs> you know like like the, the game is so stabilized. stabilizing yeah and um like players are figuring out the meta game. Well, huh. play, players have figured out the game, and the meta game is evolving because so, the stability has been hit. Yeah, um, but like the thing that I don't like about the way StarCraft Two is now, and there's an argument to be made that like having a million different leagues is good. I liked how in Brood War, the we only follow Kespa in that. <laughs> yeah, the Kespa League was pretty much it. But then, like with StarCraft Two, you have a bunch of different leagues, and the hard um, and and the legendary Kespa players aren't all in the Kespa league anymore. Yeah. And so, like Jadong is with was he with EG? Like last time I checked, he was with EG. So no, but they still meet each other at some point, right? Yeah, yeah, they all they all. So like, it's pretty kinda... much like UEFA. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> But then, I mean, like, yeah, you don't see regularly Cristiano Ronaldo battling it out with Wayne Rooney, but when it happens, it's a must watch. Yeah. The problem is, though, the World Cup only really happens like once every <laughs> four years. So. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> so you have to follow a league, at least. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, personally, I think that's a good, um, that's a good model for them because it regionalizes the game. The problem with it being regionalized, though, is you have the Koreans dominating, because well, wait, it's not, a, it's not, it's not our problem. <laughs> it's the Korean talent. Yeah, well, in in in, in the sense that uh, you, like, in, in in the big international tournaments where you have players coming in from different regions, it's say Jadong qualified through North America. Oh, right, that that kind of thing. Like, I, I have a, I have a problem with that. It's not by nationality, but where the league is played. Yeah. So, there. But so yeah, pretty know. much like uh, UEFA. <laughs> no, the, the game itself, though, it's it's been getting a lot more. I've been getting into watching it. Uh, yeah. Zerg for life. <laughs> uh, now that you're watching it, I feel inclined to watch as well. I'll send you. I'll, I'll send al- you some as links. always. No, I mean ESL or even going at ESL. And the thing is, the difference now is. We don't play StarCraft 2. Yeah. That's, that's we, why I find it interesting. Yeah. The reason why we watch Pro Brood War was to freaking pull off the pro moves while we're playing with our <laughs> friends. That was it. And nostalgia because we, like... Yeah. It was oh, nostalgia. It was really funny because, like, it, it, it was when my little brother, like, got a copy of StarCraft Brood War <laughs> because we were preparing ourselves for StarCraft 2. <laughs> then we just really got into Brood War. <laughs> Started watching, like, oh wow, that Savior guy yeah. was beaten by this Bisu guy. Okay, wow. Whoa. Man, uh, Bisu's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> like Dark Templars in seven minutes. <laughs> See, like, I have seven Z lots in seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that Jadong Muta harass. Oh man. man that was insane. I. I 24 mutalisks in one clump uh, in two clumps in right? two clumps and <laughs> controlling them and then back and forth back yeah, and forth back and forth yeah, while like, macroing like oh come on that's not, that, that's not fair yeah that's like totally inhuman or, or, or how or how the legend of the fall <laughs> <laughs> or how he freaking makes a psionic storm bed that's bigger than the screen 
Oh yeah, dude, that's how insane. the hell does he do that? Well, he's Jangbi, dude. That's <laughs> <laughs> why so he's the legend of the ball. Well, the other thing that makes StarCraft 2 fun to watch, or not fun to watch, but mm-hmm. that, that makes it easier to watch than Brood War in a lot of ways, is the spectator, or like the cam, can zoom out. Ah, there you go. <laughs> so you can see so you can see troop movements, you can see flanks. Yeah. Like, that's good. Uh, that's why I enjoy watching Dota. Because they can zoom out. Not, not just zoom out, but every time there's a huge clash, they show numbers. Oh. Damage dealt, gold gain, okay, items yeah. used or powers used. Because like a, a, a huge thing in Dota is the cooldowns, right? Yeah. Or like, oh, he can't use his ulti for the next two minutes. Oh, Sometimes that okay. two minutes is enough for that person to get killed. Mm. The thing about StarCraft Two, and I kind of agree with some of the guys on Team Liquid who said that the. Like having too much data on screen hurts watching StarCraft 2. Because like that, that that thrill is sort of gone because at some point you realize that this person is gonna win. Uh, I mean personally I don't think in Dota 2 that's that, not that a problem. A thing, right? Yeah, because um as much as clashes are huge like the group ganks and clashes are yeah, a huge yeah. thing. At the end of the day, it's about destroying that other guys. It's it's about destroying yeah. the towers. Yeah. The towers and um, ancient. Oh yeah, because you are defending Sending the, the ancient. ancient. Yeah, like there are times that the other teams are so clobbered and whatnot, and then they just defeat got defeated in one clash, and then snowballs. Mm. <laughs> it snowballs all the way to the destruction of a tower, and the lamentation of, of the <laughs> women. <laughs> but but I mean, it's interesting because uh, at its core, I think esports is finally. Finding out what makes esports interesting. It's it's always going to be the same as other sports, man. It's all about the human drama. Yeah. It's it's all about like rivalries. It's yeah, all about rivalries. It's pretty much basic storytelling. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what esports. That's why we're, uh, that's why sports entertainment is the best thing ever <laughs> because they intentionally create <laughs> like drama. Have you did you watch the um, what's what's the the, the league here? Uh, the, the wrestling PWR yeah the PWR I, I've been I've been hearing so many good things about it like we should do an episode on that with Cinna Martin and John after they we watch we're actually it gonna out. put Martin on here for our special wrestling bodega nights that's a good that, that's a good point <laughs> um, have him write down his thoughts and we'll read them out <laughs> Martin says that or, yeah. or or we can have him like type it out and have exactly. it in and, and have it in like a Stephen Hawking <laughs> sort of voice. That's what I'm gonna pull out. I mean, I'm not gonna say. He should have a, like a recorder, <laughs> or he can record. But we will, you know, the witness protection voice. <laughs> yeah, we will end this voice into witness protection mode. <laughs> it's like, <"Rrr." laughs> but yeah, I mean, I've I've been the here mark so work much, yeah. or whatever. The mark workers were there. Look, they there. <laughs> Or the analog for Undertaker is very blah 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 blah. But I've been hearing so many good things. Like I remember seeing like Martin or must or might have been John like post pictures on Facebook. Martin. Martin. I think I really follows wrestling, huh? Yeah. Like, I haven't seen a proper like wrestling show in a long time. In so long. <laughs> Like, I heard a lot of really good things about the WrestleMania that just happened, but... Oh, it's just weird! Personally, for me, I was expecting a crappy WrestleMania. Mm. I'm not sure, do I find it good because of I lowered my expectations? Or I find it good because they really pulled off a good job? Huh. And I'm leaning towards, they actually pulled off a good job. Yeah, because I've been hearing good things about it. Yeah, because, um... Again, my philosophy with WrestleMania is whoever goes out the champion or he becomes the champion during WrestleMania is pretty much WWE's MVP for the year. Okay. Like, I, I believe that. Like, for, for that's why. Wait, are we Rock- spoiling it? Mm-hmm. Are we spoiling it? Yeah, it's okay. All right, I spoil it. I mean, it's so it's wrestling. <laughs> that's why in, in, in last year, Daniel Bryan won because he was pretty much the MVP. And come, like, after WrestleMania, the the raw aftermath mm, yeah, when he, yeah, yeah. Whip, he came out in the mic everyone was chanting you deserve it 
Oh, okay. Because he really deserved. He 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 pulled his weight and 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 he really like did a lot of great stuff. Mm-hmm. So for me personally, yeah, I'm uh, he he deserved it. But you know, neck injuries and whatnot. And then of course it's an entire year. Who is WWE gonna award the MVP or like? Who is the, not? I don't want to use the term the face of the company, but just someone who did good stuff. Like, right. Yeah. Like, like be him a be him like a face or a heel. Yeah, be it a face or a heel. Somebody who just went at it. Yeah. So so like like CM Punk for a while. Yeah. CM. No, well, he didn't win a championship during WrestleMania. Oh, yeah, that's true. And he never won a championship during WrestleMania. <laughs> I think he was reigning, but I think now they're. Turning that into a thing that you have to win it during WrestleMania. Like it started with Benoit and uh, Eddie Guerrero. Like they won championships during WrestleMania. Okay, yeah. And because they were really good that year. Mm, so so it's like a good job. Yeah, good job. At the biggest show of our entire culture. Like, yeah. You are the champion. Mm. Because for this year, you're the most amazing thing. And for me, Seth Rollins was I was saying last year that the MVP should either be Dolph Ziggler or Seth Rollins. Mm. But they gave it to Seth Rollins in the most amazing fashion ever. I I didn't watch it. Money in the bank. He cashed in. But not in... Because Edge already did that. Like, John Cena was beaten by... I forgot who the opponent was and was just lying on the ground. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it was was one great wrestling moment. One of the best wrestling moments of all time. And mm. Edge pulled that off. Like he was the first one who did that money in the bank. Cash yeah, yeah. in in that way. And Seth Rollins in in, in in he pulled it off really well. He what he did was it was a between Brock Lesnar. <laughs> there goes his MMA career. <laughs> <laughs> Suplex City. Anyway, Brock Lesnar <laughs> and Roman Reigns. Okay. And it's an amazing script what they're doing with Brock Lesnar where he just decimates everyone. Mm. Decimates, like, destroy. He destroyed John Cena during Royal Rumble. Like, it wasn't even fun to watch. Like, <laughs> uh, and here in this WrestleMania, like, three seconds in, F5's Roman Reigns. Uh. And then put him in, like, 17 German suplexes. Okay. That's why, during... I'm not sure if it's scripted or not. He shouted to... To Roman Reigns, Suplex City, <laughs> which is a, oh my god, and everyone's chanting Suplex City. <laughs> so Roman Reigns is beat as all hell, okay. right? Lo and behold, Seth, and then like, for some you know wrestling, and then kind of they will tip the favor a bit to Roman Reigns. Oh, he's gaining momentum, but he's so beat. So Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar is down. Out comes Seth Rollins, cashing in his money in the bank. Hmm. Turns the match into a triple threat. Nice. Like did his special on Brock, did his special on Seth Roll uh, on on Roman Reigns. Mm. He didn't pin Brock. He pinned Roman Reigns because the guy has been beat the entire match. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he only you only need three seconds to win a wrestling match. Right. And he did so. It's like oh, <laughs> that's why everybody was rioting because that was such an amazing way to win, and. For an MVP to do it, like the company MVP, yeah, yeah, to pull it off, you know, great fashion was like, that was a great wrestling, ma- a WrestleMania moment, mm. like, that's why I'm like, hmm. So I thought, if this was a good WrestleMania, it probably was. I mean, I actually am now leaning towards that. It was really a good WrestleMania for a, con- a year. I consider for wrestling to be a down year, okay, because they had so many injuries, like mm. Daniel Bryan's injuries and uh, some bad writing decisions. I would. I haven't been following it like, at all. And, oh yeah, but um, Martin would share the same sentiment that there are times that watching Raw or SmackDown is just agony. Like NXT is better. Huh. You know NXT's head writer, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Triple H. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's gotta be. Yeah, pretty it's pretty gotta be amazing, right? Like, if for no other reason than it's th- that it is Triple H. Yeah, and bring in WrestleMania. DX appeared huh cause uh, they had a match with Triple H versus Sting right yeah yeah oh shout out to Sting like, <laughs> like, like he finally buckled yeah and like and, and, and Hogan and what do you call that 
uh, Razor Ramon and, and like the legends. Yeah, more they also appeared for Sting. So it was DX versus NWO. Whoa! Yeah, that's why it was an amazing WrestleMania. <laughs> yeah, fine, Triple H won, but you know who cares? Everybody was there. <laughs> so everyone's chanting, "This is awesome." <laughs> you have to procure a copy of this now. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that I didn't like about WrestleMania, actually, I kind of like Bray Wyatt versus Undertaker because it was like sort of passing of the torch. Yeah. Because you know they're both. You know, they have that character of like we're scary and we're pretty new. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. yeah. Well, and Undertaker's really getting old. <laughs> like, good on him to still appear in this WrestleMania. I thought after Brock, that's his retirement match. Well, nah, he's still here. <laughs> needs the money, maybe. <laughs> nah, it just runs in your blood, you know. But he isn't Samoan. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Shout out to Roman Reigns. <laughs> Uh, and shout out to uh, what was the name of that? Um, Rikishi? Upega. Upega. Uh, because, like, I. I, I oh, yeah, Upega. Re- yeah, because, like, they, they send, like, laptops to Samoa. Samoa. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember, like, a line from the interview where. Um, so, like, kids <laughs> in Samoa can become IT professionals instead of professional wrestlers. <laughs> <laughs> But it's not like every Samoa. It's a wrestling family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, The Rock has is part Samoan, and then, like, the Usos are the sons of Rikishi. Yeah. And then, like, a, a whole other, like, bunch of Samoans. <laughs> it's, it's an entire family, a wrestling family. Like, the Guerreros. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, haven't, I, haven't, I really have not been following wrestling. It's okay. You're not losing anything. Because, I mean, I could say that really the previous year was a down year. Right. But... How they pulled off from WrestleMania, like, hmm, not bad, not bad. You have to get Martin on the show. Yeah, you might make the like you're only allowed to talk about wrestling. All else, shush. <laughs> Mute the mic. <laughs> we should get him like a we should get him like a wrestling show on this. Yeah, he should on, have his on, own on wrestling podcast. 14, right? Like, I would have, I would have mind. Yeah, he should have his own that. wrestling podcast. You should tell him. Yeah. One man wrestling podcast. <laughs> uh, have have him talk to somebody that have him talk to me like somebody that knows nothing about wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> or like, yeah, one man wrestling podcast. I mean, I, I don't think I would listen to that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it's my thing, man. Yeah. Huh. Like reactions from last night's Raw. <laughs> Like the raw after show, <laughs> the rafter show, <laughs> rafter show <laughs> with uh, Doctor. Oh, what's his name? Doctor Straight Edge. Professor? No, not Sven. Sven. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's his video game name. Yeah, I never understood that. Me too. <laughs> I, I I I don't understand Sven. I don't understand Ironic Gamer, and I don't understand Saxo. I kind of get ironic gamer because you're gaming on Mac. Yeah, but, but that not but that's Alanis Morissette ironic, not actual English vocabulary ironic. This is a Vsauce video on ironic, <laughs> on the word ironic. <laughs> something about oh, it's it like like, like it isn't. It was something about how ironic used in Alanis Morissette's song was dramatic irony. <laughs> not ironic. Right, because like yeah. a dramatic irony when used in literature or whatever is when your protagonist doesn't know something bad is gonna happen, but the audience does. Ah, right. That's that's dramatic irony. No, but that's it was, The thing is, in Alanis Morris said, it's just two lines. The setup and the irony, quote unquote irony. Yeah, but we know that this ain't gonna end well. How? There was not... There's just no middle. It's just the well, premise see, and the punch. Yeah, but that's looking at it line by line, uh-huh. not looking at it as a coherent whole. Oh, yeah, because right? the, the, the entire thing is, you know, that it's just awful things. Yeah, and we as the audience no, know that awful this things. is terrible. Like, <laughs> we know that Oedipus is going to, like, impregnate his mom or whatever. Yeah, and, and kill his, his dad. Yeah. yeah. Like, we know that's going to happen in, as the audience in the same way that we know 
that when Alanis Morissette says it's like meeting the man of your dreams, and we we know that what is going to follow is and meeting his beautiful husband. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. <laughs> One love. <laughs> Oh, like when she performs it live, sometimes she says like meeting the man of your dreams and meeting his beautiful husband. Yeah, because like uh, social justice and stuff. I mean, I don't mind that. Yeah, that's the type of social justice I'm okay with. What What is a social justice warrior? I don't know. And and really? why is and why, why is is, why is Saxel so angry at him? I have no idea. That's why I was like, if there are warriors, there should be social justice. Warlords. <laughs> <laughs> They're all on Tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> the Tumblr fiefdoms. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> have you seen that movie, The Warriors? I have to. I have to. It's such a weird movie. I only know The Warriors because of Turk. It's, I, I, I watched it in high school. <laughs> like, what is this film? <laughs> it looks terrible. <laughs> like, the production quality is... like The production values are awful, but... It is awesome for what it is. You, like you are entertained. Yeah, as, as a product of its time, though. Like it's it's one of those mm-hmm. it's one of those product of its time movies. You look you look back on it like maybe it doesn't hold up, but <laughs> but like at at the time, like, it was pretty cool. Um, what was it in elementary school? But like I, I remember watching it and thinking like this is badass, and watching it later on, like in college, um, I, I still found it pretty badass, but. Like, not in the same way that a six-year-old finds Adam West's Batman badass. <laughs> huh. Because it's dated. Yeah, it, it feels it feels dated. But since we still are familiar with the 80s, we are still gonna get it. Yeah, we still get it. But someone born in 97 wouldn't probably, like, what the hell is this? Um, Yeah. Or I guess in the same way that uh, one would find Adam West's Batman awesome, uh, but not the same way that a six-year-old does. Like, admittedly, I find Batman West, uh, Adam West's '60s Batman, awesome, but not because it's like good. Yeah, but because you understand what it is. Yeah, like it, it, it was a product of its time. Exactly. It was. Sort of, they they actually did play. They they made the conscious effort to ham it up. Yeah. And that's why I don't get why people don't like it because it's hammy. Because like there are people who no, because do not people like are just it. in love with Dark Age Batman. Oh yeah, Frank Miller. I'm looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean I don't I don't see anything bad about it. Hmm. It's just preferences, and people set themselves up for disappointment <laughs> when their preferences are not met. Yeah. Looking at you, Nolan. <laughs> <laughs> you and your dark uh, night. Oh, no, yeah, Frank Miller. No, the director that gets in the pass every time because he directed the dark night. <laughs> I love that line that they use in freaking honest trailers. I don't know. I haven't I haven't watched a Christopher Nolan movie since Dark Knight Rises. Uh don't. Uh my sister pointed out one thing about Nolan. All his stories follow the same exact thing. Well, like a lot of talking and then somebody dies. <laughs> <laughs> but then it turns out that the guy that died was actually yeah. alive. Yeah, it's always about uh, man versus himself. Man is like a strong character but questions himself but finds inner strength and then inner strength will, you know, solve everything. So it's... It's your cinematic version of that book, The Alchemist. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, when you think about it, Nolan puts a lot of mumbo jumbo in his movies, but they oh, yeah. all just tell the same thing. Yeah, like The Alchemist. <laughs> and pretty much every book by that guy, uh, <laughs> Coelho. Coelho. Paulo Coelho. Yeah, like that, that's exactly. I, I've read a bunch of his work. Don't get me wrong, and and uh, you know he, he does write pretty yeah. well. Like it's it's beautiful language. I'll give it that, but it's all the same story. Somebody goes on a journey, finds himself, and discovers that what he's been looking for is in front of him. Yeah, it was in front of him the whole time, with a lot of flowery language, but in between. So, yeah. so that's like a Chris Nolan film. Yeah, pretty much. Except it's man and facing his inner demons, but finds out that 
to defeat his inner demons, he must have to have that strength. Yeah. And a weird ending. <laughs> <laughs> Every Christopher Nolan film has a weird ending. Except Batman Begins. Because that wasn't an ending. Exactly. That was the <laughs> beginning. <laughs> you got my joke. <laughs> What is that? It's like there's something going on downstairs. I don't know. And they stop. But yeah, that's the thing about freaking Christopher Nolan. When Batman Begins is the only thing that doesn't have an ending. Or doesn't have a weird ending. <laughs> doesn't have a weird ending. Because it was a Batman beginning. <laughs> and not a Batman rising. <laughs> I still like my theory on uh, the Dark Knight Rises. I'm not going to go turncoat on that. I, mean, I agree with you. But I, I don't think it's a great. I, I don't think it's a great movie. It's it's not a great movie. But I like my it theory. It was an about, acceptable ending. I like my theory about the ending. Right. It was after that nuclear explosion thing. Batman was blasted into the past, <laughs> where he fights his way through history while Dick Grayson is in bat or is is in Gotham being Batman. And once Bruce Wayne makes it back to Gotham City, it's just in time for the new Fifty Two, i.e., the reboot. <laughs> Comic book geeks will get it because, like, there was a time when Batman was blasted into the past, and like Dick Grayson was Robin along with Damian Wayne, and because like Bruce Wayne and um, Talia Al Ghul got it on, it's conceivable that there's a Damian Wayne in this universe. Ooh, <laughs> and then like it was rebooted with the new Fifty Two, so you know, which is the dark and gritty, which is DC's dark and gritty. Which pretty much describes what Zack Snyder did with um, Man of Steel. Mm-hmm. So that's that's the new Fifty Two. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna see a bat flick. Batka, <laughs> Batka, Batka. How did this, my brother? <laughs> I barely get to like Skype with him anymore because PLDT is sucking. In law school. Oh well. Oh, you, you kind of put the time here. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, in the... Like, my folks Skype with... Like, make it a point to Skype with him in the morning. Because, mm-hmm. like, he's pretty much on, like, the direct other side of the world. Yeah, and that's a sweet spot. Yeah, like, like 9, an around, 10 yeah. in the morning is 9, 10 in the evening on the East Coast. Which is great, because he has nothing to do with, or, like, downtime. Yeah, and, you know, it's, it's like, that's when I'm just waking up. Or, you know, I've, I've had my, my first coffee of the day, so I'm like, hey, mm-hmm. what's up? How are you doing? Like, how's... Um, how's applying for what's it he's, he's going back to school huh. he wants to take an MBA or something it's still in Boston yeah so like somewhere there not sure where yeah interesting yeah not not in Harvard though <laughs> although like we're all um, we're all like Pushing. encouraging him to like apply everywhere it's a better Filipino thing to do. <laughs> what apply like, apply everywhere? Oh, yeah. like, just encourage him to apply everywhere because, like, you never know. Yeah. You know, you could end up in like MIT or whatever, right? Like, <laughs> like don't waste the time while you're there, man. <laughs> I just can't believe if your brother will end up in MIT. Not because he's not capable. It's just that your brother in MIT, the chillest person <laughs> in <laughs> MIT, <laughs> surrounded by a bunch of geeks and the Indians and. <laughs> Chinese Indians and like up with their pencil pushes and your brother's like yeah <laughs> you should find you should go to Northeastern <laughs> they seem a lot more chill like a Northeastern or B or something <laughs> or your brother goes to Duke and finds out he has basketball skills <laughs> he is kind of tall <laughs> Coach K recruits him. But I'm taking an MBA. <laughs> Nobody has to find out. <laughs> You're taking an MBA, but I'm gonna take you <laughs> to the <laughs> NBA. <laughs> Except my brother loves football and his knees busted up. <laughs> <laughs> so is it cricket then? Does Duke have cricket? <laughs> Does BU have cricket? <laughs> <laughs> I would be surprised. You should look up BU cricket team. But you said all of the Indians go to MIT, right? They probably have a really good cricket Oh, probably. 
So what does MIT have? Noam Chomsky and cricket. <laughs> <laughs> I want to take an MFA in photography in Hartford. Hartford Square. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't know. We'll see. I have to take a scholarship because I can't afford it. We'll see if the American taxpayers would be so kind to me. <laughs> or, you know, donations. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. So you'll be like taking photos. And stuff in like Trafalgar Square <laughs> and like the cab pack <laughs> walking around with the camera everybody will think you're a retard I have no <laughs> I have no idea what I'm gonna do in Connecticut though there's Hartford Connecticut like University of Hartford has one of the best MFA programs so I'm not sure but then again nothing is sure in this life <laughs> Just like Christopher Nolan's endings in every movie. <laughs>